Hello, for this lesson we are going to be doing more with circles. So the last couple of lessons have been very straightforward, figuring out circumference, figuring out the area, um, which is the basic and approaching or, um, levels, and now we're going to take it a step up to try to reach the proficient level having to solve area problems. So. What I'd like you to do is pause and see, thinking of what you know already about circumference um, of a circle, now that we know the area formula, pi r squared, how would you write or how would you figure out what expression would help you figure out area of a semicircle and the area of a quarter circle? So pause, see if you can get it down. All right, hopefully this was just common sense to you. If you're figuring out a semicircle, it is half of the circle. So you are taking half of the area. So here is the area of the circle divided by 2. Area of a quarter circle, you take the area of the circle and divide it by 4 because it is a quarter circle. All right, let's look at our first problems. This is a semicircle. Oops, semicircle. So we know that it is going to be half of a normal circle, and it says find the area. Now be very careful with this lesson because sometimes it's going to say area and sometimes it's going to say circumference. So to find the area of a whole circle, it's pi, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. But because it is half, we're going to divide it by 2. Now notice what we're given. We're given the diameter, so we have to divide it in 2 to get the radius. And then it's just a matter of plugging in what you know. Um, this one is a little different because it has a fraction, so there's fraction work. So I'm going to take this right here, and I'm going to write it a little bit different. I'm going to write it as pi r squared, and then I'm going to do like this, divided by 2. And that might help those of you that don't like a lot of fraction work. So we're going to do pi is 22 sevenths and then r squared. r is 7, so 7 squared is 49. I'm going to do that first and then divide by 2. So you know I like to cancel out first, so I'm going to cancel out 7 goes into 7 once, it goes into 49 7 times. So now it's a matter of just doing the operation. 22 times 7 and you can use a calculator. If not, just do the old-fashioned 22 times 7 like this. But that is 154. And then we have to divide it by 2 because it is just half the circle. 154 divided by 2 is 77. We're in centimeters, so our label is going to be centimeters squared. Because you remember, with area, it, we're always measuring in square units. All right, so now what's the area of the quarter circle? So now we're given the radius. So please pause. We're still using 22 sevenths. Please pause and see if you can figure out this one on your own. All right, this is what I have so far for this problem. And I pause because I want you to understand what I'm doing. So I had my original area equals pi r squared. And then because it is a quarter circle, I have it divided by 4. And then I rewrote it like this. And so then I plugged in what I knew. And here I see 7 doesn't go into 36. So certainly you can do 22 times 36 and then divide it by 7. However, and then divide it by 4. However, I'm going to change it. I know that dividing by a number is the same thing as multiplying by its multiplicative inverse. We have talked about that a lot. And I want you to see how this changes the problem for me. So now I changed this to its multiplicative inverse or reciprocal. So remember that you're flipping it. So we can, when we're dividing, we can multiply by its multiplicative inverse. And now, because it's all multiplying, I can use the commutative property and do this part first. So now I can do 4 goes into 4 once. It goes into 36 9 times. Then I can do the 22 times 9 to get 198 divided by 7 to get approximately 
28.89, or I could just leave it like this. So it's approximately 198 sevenths centimeters squared, which is 22.29 centimeters squared. So remember that many times the reason you know those properties, the reason we spend time doing the multiplicative inverse, is because it really does make your life easier in the end. Okay, new problem. I really want you to pause and then highlight and get a game plan and then come back. All right, so this is what I have so far. I know that I need to make the placemat that, is, that has a rectangle in the middle and then two semicircles, which would be pushed together to make one circle. So we have the rectangle area and the circle area. I also want you to notice how I have them separated and labeled because part of this is communicating mathematically. So you need to show me what you're doing. So I have my work labeled. This is where I'm going to figure out my rectangle area. This is my circle area. So the rectangle area is length times width. So my length is... 4 times 3, which is 12, and my width is 8. For my area of the circle, I'm going to use 3.14 times, and my radius right there is 4 squared. And so now I just need to plug it into the calculator, add them together to get my total area. Please. Pause the video, do the calculations. All right, so I took my length times my width. I took the pi times r squared. I added them together to get this. Then the next question says, what if she wants to make six? How many square inches will she need? Assume there is no waste. So we're not going to consider all of this waste right here. We're just going to assume there's no waste. So we needed to multiply this by six to get 877.44 inches squared. So this was in inches as well. So here is my answer for up here. And then I took the times 6 to get this. All right, next problem, which is still part of the same. Now we're figuring out if she wants to put something all the way around it, all the way around it, how much will she how much material will she need? So there's this and this, so that's easy to see. That is our 12 plus her 12. And then we need to figure out this part right here. Well, if we take this and this and push them together, that's like the circumference of a circle. So I'm going to add the circumference of the circle. The circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. So 3.14 times the diameter is 8. So 3.14 times 8 is approximately 25.12. So if I take that number plus my 12 and 12, I have... And again, notice how I showed this, and I showed this part. So my final answer is approximately 49.12. And because this is linear, um, it is the perimeter. It is not going to be squared. It's just going to be in inches. Okay. So... This slide is all about noticing that it's the circumference, the area, one is an estimation, and one is the exact. I want you to remember for the exact, you're going to leave, oops, leave in terms of pi. So you're going to have that pi symbol in there. So remember the circumference. The circumference is pi times diameter. Now notice what this asks for. It asks for the exact area. Well, to find the area, we need to know the radius. And one way we can find the radius is to know the diameter. 
But in this case, we're given the circumference. So we have to plug in what we know. This is called evaluating. So we're going to take this 24 pi and plug it in for the circumference. 24 pi. And this is perfect because it wants it to be an exact, so it left it in terms of pi. So now watch what happens. When I take pi times the diameter to get the d by itself, because we need to know that to get the radius, we need the radius to get the area, we're going to divide by pi, divide by pi, so my diameter is 24. So if the di diameter is 24, that means the radius is 12. So that was figuring out the radius. Now we have to take the area formula. So area equals pi r squared and just put r in, so 12 squared times pi. So the exact area of the circle is 144 because that's 12 squared pi. So to recap, we were given the circumference, we needed to find the area. So we had to work backwards to get the diameter, divide by 2 to get the radius, so we divided by pi to get the diameter, we divided by 2 to get the radius, and then we plugged that into the area. So here it says find the area of a circle with a diameter of 42. So you do the same thing, except instead of leaving it in pi, you'd use 22 sevenths. I'm going to let you do that one on our own so this video doesn't get too long. Okay, so here's another one. So this time the circumference is pi sorry, 9 pi. So using what we just did, see if you can do the same three steps we just did. Figure out the diameter by working backwards, figure out the radius by dividing by 2, and figure out the area. And then check back. So pause and figure this, try to do this on your own, and then come back. All right, so so far this is what I have. Anytime I'm using a formula, I write it down so I can see where everything goes, where all the parts are. So the circumference formula is circumference equals pi times the diameter. So I plugged in, it told me the circumference was 9 pi, so I plugged that in. And then I saw that there were pi's I could cancel out on both sides. So d was multiplied by pi, so we are going to divide by pi. So that left me with d. So the diameter if we want to find the radius, we have to divide it by 2. So I wrote that down so I knew what I was doing. I plugged in 9 for the diameter, so my radius is 4.5 centimeters. From there, we just plug in the area of a circle. Area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So we can leave it in terms of pi. 4.5 squared. You can use your calculator if you'd like to, to do 4.5 squared. You don't have to do it by yourself unless you'd like to, but it's just 4.5 times 4.5, or you can use the squared button. So it is exactly 20.25 pi centimeters squared. All right, the last problem on this slide hints at what might be your four-level question or something that would lead to the four-level question. It's more difficult than this. But it says, find the area between the two quarter circles. So you have to find all of this area in here. So when you're finding area like this, you have to think of it as taking away. We have to find our big area and then take our smaller areas away. So let's see what it tells us. It says from A to F is 7 feet, and from F to B is 9 feet, and HD is 7 feet. So I know all of these dimensions, 9, and 
it says that each quarter circle have the same radius. So it, because g is across from h, this is 7, this is 7, that must mean this is 7, and this is 7. So we can find our area of the rectangle very easily by taking that 14 right here and multiplying it by the 16, which is right here. Now again, I'm doing this problem with you instead of having you try it on your own because I know what's coming up and I know that on your assessment, you're going to have to think about taking away to find an area. So the area of the rectangle is, let's see, we're in feet, 224 feet squared. Then we have to figure these two. They're two quarter circles, which means it really forms a semicircle because there's two of them put together. That has a radius of seven. So we are going to do the area is pi r squared divided by two. So the radius is seven. So now we have 49 pi divided by two, which is approximately, and I'm gonna use the 3.14, 49 times 3.14 divided by two is approximately 76.9 three feet. So here's my area of my rectangle, here's my semicircle. So now the part left over, because it says find between the two, so the part left over we have to subtract. We're subtracting the area of the rectangle minus the area of the semicircle. So 2, 2, 4, minus 7, 6.93. 7, 6.93 is approximately, and we have to say approximately because remember down here we used the 3.14. 147 and 7 one hundredths feet squared. So I want you to keep that in mind when you are working on your review tomorrow and the assessment that was something like this, you're figuring out the whole area and then taking the other pieces away that we don't want to know about or we don't want to consider in our area. Okay, that's it. Sorry this video was long. We out.